Um, in terms of argument, um, the staple argument in all scripture in the Semitic religions is the idea of a teleological presence of God in nature, that God is the supreme designer, he created the world. In David Hume, um, there's a very able refutation of this opinion, and David Hume is the first philosopher in the Western tradition who basically signed a death warrant uh, for, for theology, in fact, for natural theology. Um, and he's the first great philosopher in the Western tradition in whom um, you see a bifurcation between theology and philosophy, uh, meaning he's entirely on the side of philosophy, perhaps understood in a pagan sense, rather than many of the great philosophers, as you know, were actually Christians in the Western tradition. In fact, some of them were saints, like St. Anselm, St. Aquinas, um, St. Thomas Aquinas, Anselm, and St. Augustine, the three great saints of the medieval millennium from the 4th to the uh, 14th century were in fact all uh, devout uh, Christians, they were saints. So that liaison has been broken. Uh, the other great culprit in this, of course, is Descartes. Um, the idea that it's quite possible to have perfect knowledge of the natural world without having any moral virtue as the person who knows that world is a Cartesian one. And it is in fact not found uh, either in, uh, in, in Platonic Greek thought or in the, in the out, outlook of the Quran or indeed in the Bible. You, I'm sure you've heard of these sayings that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And in the Quran as well, after every biography of every prophet, it says, and once they had reached their maturity, we gave them wisdom and knowledge. So the idea is that knowledge, secular knowledge included, that of nature, is actually a reward for virtue, for something moral. We no longer believe that. I'm sure you all know great scientists and great philosophers and great intellectuals in the universities who are perfectly moral human beings. So it, it came to me as a bit of a shock when I was a student at Cambridge when I found that some of my professors of moral philosophy led very immoral lives. Um, and it, in fact, later on it occurred to me that this in fact was entirely to be expected since they did not have any higher view of the human person's vocation. Uh, so therefore, in some sense, it was to be expected that human beings should not rise to any great moral heights. Uh, 